The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Today is Rite of Confirmation. We are missing one of our young people who had a uh, family commitment. And the other kid said, oh, you can do that? <laughs> it just means on a Saturday night we're going to have another confirmation student for one student. Um, so follow your bulletin. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. These confirmants have been instructed in the Christian faith and desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Austin Leon Anno. Christina Rose Carlson. Amanda Grace Helmke. Janelle Ann Joshwick, Megan Claire Melgren, Joseph William Morris, Carly Elizabeth Ott. Dear friends, we rejoice that you now desire to make a public profession of your faith and assume greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission in the world. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus received you and made you members of his church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from God's word his loving purpose for you and all creation. You have been nourished at his holy table and called to be witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ. As you affirm your baptism, I ask you to reject sin, profess your faith in Christ, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If you renounce evil, then where do you find hope? The answer is, in faith, I turn to Christ as my Lord and Savior. <laughs> I want to hear you say that. In faith. In faith, I turn to Christ. Okay, I'm going to make you say it louder. In faith, I turn to Christ. As my Lord and Savior. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I invite everyone to stand. Do you believe in God Almighty? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray for those who are affirming their baptism, that they may be redeemed from all evil and rescued from the way of sin and death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may open their hearts to your grace and truth and keep them faithful to your holy church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That they may be sent into the world and witness to your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend these young people, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, 
and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, answer, I do and I ask God to help and guide me. Very good. I invite the congregation to sit. Confirmants, you may kneel. Parents, sponsors, and anybody else you would like to come forward, please come and place your hand upon your confirmant. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth. Stir up in these men and women the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Christina. Christina. Rose Carlson, Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Christina the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Janelle Ann Joswick. John 1, verses 3 and 4. All things come into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Janelle the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Joseph William Morris. 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 through 25. Do you not know that in a race the runners all compete, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win it. Athletes exercise self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable one. Father in heaven, For Jesus' sake, stir up in Joseph the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Carly Elizabeth Ott, Psalms 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Carly the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Megan Claire Melgren. Isaiah 64, verse 8. But now, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Megan the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Amanda Grace Helmke, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. 
Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Amanda the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Austin Leon Anno. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Austin the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, Empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. You have each made public affirmation of your faith and through the laying on of hands received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, David's going to help pass out lighted candles to each of you. Actually, to your parents. In fact, you can stand. Candle very similar to the one your parent will hand you right now was given to you at your baptism. And as adult members of this congregation, well, very good, give the candle. As adult members of this congregation, you are now adults, by the way. I proclaim you adults. As adult members of this congregation entrusted with the blessings and responsibilities of being a disciple of Jesus Christ, receive now this charge from your brothers and sisters in Christ. In fact, turn and face the congregation. In congregation, we say, let your light so shine before others that... Congregation, please stand. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. You may blow out your candles and sit down. Parents, you may go sit down. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. But I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive them their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Second Lessons, Romans 3, 19-28. 
Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He died this to show his righteousness, because in this his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes a boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Jesus entered Jericho and, and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything... I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, this is a simply living sermon. Our Reformation faith, in particular, we're going to talk about justification. By the way, Reformation, this is the guy from uh, those Trinity series of movies. What if I told you October 31st is Reformation Day, not Halloween? I thought it was funny. Have you carved your Reformation Day pumpkins yet? I don't always nail things to church doors, but when I do, stuff starts to happen. Okay, justification. Why do we need it? Some people think that Oh, this is a worn out day. Let's forget about Reformation. Let's forget about that whole idea of justification. Why do I need to be justified? I'm a pretty good person. Right? So why do we need it? What is it? How do we receive it? I'm going to try, hopefully, to answer all three of those questions. Why do we need it? We spend a good part of our lives trying to justify ourselves before others. We do it with the cars we drive. We do it with the clothes we wear. We do it with even the friends that we try to impress and have as, as friends. One example is if you're looking for a job, many of you, if you've ever looked for a job and if you've done so recently, the pressure is great. Here's my resume. Here's everything I have done, all my accomplishments. 
please accept me, give me the job, right? Higher education is the same thing when you want to go for an advanced degree. The only thing you've got going in your favor is they want your tuition income. But don't we give our, the resume of all the academic achievements we've made? Justification. We do try to justify ourselves. Remember the old movie? I realize whenever I mention movies, the confirmation kids go, I wasn't born yet. <laughs> and this is another one of those movies that they weren't born yet when it came out. Although maybe they did see it somewhere along the line. It's a popular film to show. In it, uh, the one uh, character, Harold Abrahams, it's a historical movie, an actual character. When he's asked, why does he practice so much? Why does he devote so much of his time to running? He, he's engaged to a young woman, and the fear is that he's devoted so much time to running and so much of his life to running, he's going to lose his fiance. And he says... When that gun goes off, I have 10 seconds. It's a 100-meter dash. I have 10 seconds to justify my existence. See? He's running to justify his existence. He's lucky he won, right? He won the gold medal. He's lucky. What would his existence be if he had lost? I want to tell you why I'm justified in being here on this planet Earth. Right? For some people, it's their children. Oh, I know I'm, I'm supposed to be here. My children are so wonderful. The only problem is that when it's our children and we are so obsessed with our children, by the way, it's a actually kind of a selfish thing to live vicariously through our children. Something always happens, doesn't it? Either our children disappoint us, or I guarantee you they're all going to grow up, and you better hope they move away. <laughs> Sidney Pollack, famous... Uh, uh, director of films. He died in 2008. When he was directing, when, when he was diagnosed with cancer, it was terminal. He's going to die. By the way, he, he had several great films like Out of Africa and uh, Tootsie, uh, the, the Firm with Tom Cruise, just a whole list of films. Great director. He's dying of cancer. His family says, Sydney. They may have said, Sid, please, stay home, stop working. We want to spend some time with you. And Sidney Pollack said, the work directing films when I was sick was terrible. I knew it was draining the life right out of me. But then he said this. Every time I finish a picture, I feel that I have earned my stay on this earth for another year or two. See how he's trying to justify his existence? So, everyone needs to do something to justify themselves. Did you know that this word justify in the Romans passage that Carly read? No, no, Amanda read? Justify is the very same word that's translated righteous or righteousness. We all want to prove ourselves. Only one more gold medal and that'll be enough. 
only one more movie, or as John D. Rockefeller said, only one more million, then I'll have enough. And he was a strong Baptist, by the way. Forgiveness, forgiveness is a negative. Now, forgiveness is a great thing. It's a great thing for we sinners. We come here every week to be forgiven, right? But it's a negative. It's a negative in the sense that you may go, I will no longer punish you. You're forgiven. Now you may go. Sort of like you get out of jail free. Justification is a positive. God Almighty through Christ is saying to us, you may come. Welcome. You are welcome into my love into, and into my presence. Welcome into my kingdom. That's justification. Martin Luther, of course, that was what the Reformation was about, all about. It comes to us through faith alone, by grace alone, through Christ alone. Richard Hooker, a 17th century Anglican, after reading Luther, said this, Let it be counted as folly or frenzy or fury whatsoever. It is our comfort and our wisdom. We care for no knowledge in this world but this, that God has made himself our sin, and we have been made his righteousness. For we are in the sight of God the Father as the very Son of God himself. See, Jesus took our sin upon himself on the cross. And what did he fill the void with? His righteousness. We're made right through Christ. And he says, come, I invite you into my kingdom. Robert Frost once said, oh, by the way, Zacchaeus, great story, isn't it? Wants to see Jesus. Jesus says, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house today. That's pretty bold. I've got some friends that I can say that to, but not very many where I can invite myself to their house. Zacchaeus. Jesus shows up at his house. And the good news is, what did Jesus say? Salvation has come to this house today. Jesus has arrived. The kingdom of God has arrived. Zacchaeus is righteous, justified, a son of Abraham. Because Jesus showed up. Robert Frost said, Home is that place when you, when you have to go there, they have to let you in. Well, this congregation, churches, are to be true homes. So when people show up, we let them in. Because Jesus is here. And Jesus says, welcome, come, enter into my kingdom. And we offer. This congregation exists for the salvation of those out there as an outpost of the kingdom of God, as a sign of God's love, as an agent of God's forgiveness, as an open table where God's hungry children can be fed. We are the world's true home. And, as, and it is our calling to cry out to the world, God is love. You are. You are welcome. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Our confirmants took one more step into the kingdom of God. And now they're agents with us to be that place of welcome. Come, 
Make your home here. Jesus bids you come. Amen. Set free by the truth of God's gracious love, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's good creation. Righteous God, write your law on our hearts. Unite your church. Help us to believe the gospel and be a place that lets your word spread 
throughout this community, throughout the entire earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Source of hope, you make wars to cease in all the world. Visit places devastated by war and conflict. As the Mosul offensive rages in Syria, we rejoice in the 50 villages which have been freed from the control of ISIS, but continue to be concerned for the millions of refugees. We grieve for the families and friends of the 13 dead and more than two dozen injured in the crash of a tour bus in California. And we pray for our country as we enter the final days of the presidential campaign. We pray for a nation that is deeply divided. We pray that as people vote, that they vote out of love, mercy, and justice. Break the bow, shadow the spear, and bring your perfect peace. Lord, in your mercy. God, our refuge and strength, you are a very present help in trouble. Comfort those who are in sick or in pain. Especially we pray for Cal Carolyn Callan, Sophia Fedgley, Dennis Holmes, Janet Littlecrow, Chris Marquardt, Laurie Pettit, Sean Snellen, Chris Snyder, Rita St. Jimmy, Lucy Stillwell, Paul Thompson, Bennett Wilkerson, Kathy Zinter, Marietta Young, and Jaden Collins. Are there any others? God, our stronghold, the saints from every age gather around your throne. We pray that you comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Lyle Dolly. Lord, in your mercy. Your Into your hands, faithful God, we place ourselves and our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let our church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory, through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our, it is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. come again to you, O God, giving you thanks so that in this face of mercy you have embraced us and healed us, making us one in the body of Christ. Go with us on our way. Equip us for every good work that we may continue to give you thanks by embracing others with mercy and healing. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. There is a reception in the honor of our confirmants uh, back in the library area. Be sure to go back and uh, enjoy a cup of coffee in their honor, as well as a piece of cake. Uh, as you may have heard in the prayers, Lyle Dolly passed away Friday evening. His memorial... Uh, he, his visitation will be Tuesday evening from 6 to 8 at Green Lawn South. And his memorial service will be here 1 o'clock Wednesday. So keep that in mind. I'm thinking you can read everything else. There's a congregational meeting on November 13th and on November 5th. There is a, were you going to say something about that, Marissa? I'll let you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, just a reminder, uh, Saturday night, November 5th, we have the talent show. I think we have eight or nine different acts lined up. So we're going to have dinner at 5 o'clock. It's a catered dinner, and then we have homemade dessert. So we have a sign-up sheet out there. If you're going to come, if you could sign up, that would really help us with the numbers. And then um, just enjoy the talent show and all the wonderful people that are members of our church and support them. So if you can sign up, that would really help us out. If there's somebody who still has a talent that hasn't had a chance to sign up, uh, let us know. We, we could probably squeeze in one or two more spots. So love to see everyone there. By the way, if you are uh, planning on going to church next Saturday, rather than it being at 5.30, worship next Saturday will be at 4 o'clock. Okay. I know most of you that doesn't mean a thing, but by the way, I'm standing here. This is a handsome looking confirmation class. They'll make great pictures. I would like to make an announcement about uh, Springfield Mid America Singers. There's a free concert this afternoon at 3 p.m at Schweitzer United Methodist Church. We'll be singing Zadok the Priest and Te Deum. And Danny Boy. Oh, then I'll have to be there. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace. Remember the poor.